fatigue, now we never sleep, yeah, we in the gym. Behind the back, John Wall, it's a nasty stop. You know the man, you know the man. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right, joining us now, it's been 11 years in the NBA, nine of those in the nation's capital, five-time All-Star, one-time All-NBA. John Wall joining us from the University of Miami. Is that where you are right now? What's going on down there? Yeah, this is where I work out every day, University of Miami. So, yeah, I'm here in the background. I just finished the workout. I like that. That's like, that's mm -hmm. like, hey, yeah. Great optics, my boy. Yeah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> great yes, optics. sir. Well, we want to get, we want to pick your brain all things that are happening in the league right now. The the big story, I guess, that came out of the weekend was the, the James Harden going to the Clippers, just like he had predicted. Oh. Um, you played with Kawhi and PG last season. Tell us how you think this is all going to fit together. Uh, for me, I don't know. You know, you don't know. Like on paper, it looks great, but you know, you have to go out there and play and uh, compete, and then they try to get their chemistry and camaraderie together. Uh, for me, it seemed like both sides got what they wanted, and uh, they just got to see and see how it works out for everybody. So the big thing that I mean, Lou has been saying it from the beginning. He's like, you do not bench Russ. You just try to do this all together. Everybody starts. Is that what you would do, or would you decide you got to bench one of them? Uh, I think he just got to keep resting the starting lineup also. You know what I mean? He's been playing well. He found his mojo back. Um, a lot of people had written him off. Uh, you can see he's back happy and playing basketball the way that we know Russ has been playing that most of his whole career. And yeah. uh, I think he gives him great leadership and uh, his competitiveness. It, uh, you can tell it leads on to all the other guys. That was, my whole, that was my whole thing, John. For the last couple of seasons, it looked like Russ has been trying to find his footing. He's been trying to find somewhere he can call home and get into a groove where he can play at a high level. Now he's playing at a high level. Why disrupt that? Yeah, for sure. I see. You watched last night. He played at a high level. He was making open shots for him and uh, trying to run their team. And uh, I think it's been great for him to see a smile back on his face. First of all, Jimmy. John, you, you no, there's Shams. Oh, there you are, Shams. My bad. <laughs> John, you, you, play, you played for the Clippers last year. Um, you're a free agent now. What's your mindset? Um, what, do you, what do you think about your NBA future and how bad are you trying to get back in the league? Well, I still love the game. Uh, I still love the grind and getting up every day, uh, doing core workouts, doing conditioning, uh, weightlifting. Uh, I like to go for a nice bike ride throughout the city of Miami like I used to back in D.C. And uh, I believe I still got a lot left in the tank. Uh, I just being patient and, and working out and staying ready. And um, I know how much I want to still play. I know how much my agent, Rich Paul, is pushing to try to get something to happen. And uh, you just got to stay ready. Uh, I'm not giving up on myself. And I feel like I can help a team win. Yeah, first of all, John, I miss you. When you come to L.A., you got to call me because we got to get up. Um, <laughs> for sure, for sure. We, we got to get up. Yeah, we got to <laughs> get, get up. And, and I hate that you're not in the league right now because there's definitely teams that can use you. You look across the board, there's backup point guards that I still think you can play at a higher level. But if there was one team right now, they called and said, come play for us, would you say hell no? <laughs> or are you pretty much open? No. No, hell no, I want a job, so I'm open for any job that come my way, to be honest. Oh, no. uh, I feel like, because I, no, I just feel like in the past, you know, like I made mistakes of, of saying certain things and then doing stuff off the court that kind of put a character out there. People, how people think they look at John Wall, that's not me, but I can accept my mistakes and my ability that I've done in the past. And for me, I'm past that. Uh, I'm a father of two boys and a stepdaughter, so I look at being a father as much as I can and loving the game. So I know how much I love the game, how much I can impact the game of, either playing or just being a vet and being a leader to the young guys because I think our league needs that. A lot of young guys need a lot of vets on their team to kind of mentor them and tell them the things we went through and what the league is all about. So we've seen, you know, guys have always sort of wanted to play for certain teams or, hey, I want to switch it up. I want to do something else. But lately it's become so public and loud. you got Dame Lillard, Harden, Kyrie, all that good stuff. When you're watching this outside looking in, what is your take on the way things are being done these days? Hey, man, whatever makes these people happy, that I'm all for. You know, for me, like, I was when I first came in, I always said I wanted to play for one team for my whole career. And that's something I prided myself off of, giving D.C. everything I had. And, then, you know, I ended up getting traded to Houston, played there for two years, and then got uh, got bought out, and then I ended up being with the Clippers. So I think just forever, whatever you feel like is best for you in your career, cool. Um, I know everybody wants to compete at a high level and uh, try to be loyal as much as, much as possible. John, like you said, you spent so much time in Washington through the ups and the downs, the adversity. Um, even when it got rocky at the end, have you ever been a guy to ask for a trade? Nah. Nah, like me, I wanted to stick it out, figure it out. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like D.C. was me. Like, I, I was all of D.C., you know, Lou battling against you for years there in, in the playoffs. Uh, I just felt like what I brought to the city and what I brought to the fan base and just everything I gave on the court, just playing through injuries and all that, I never wanted to be outside of that jersey. But, you know, things happen. 
and uh, you move past that and you look for whatever's next for you in the future. You mentioned the uh, traded by the Wizards for Russ. Is it true? Like, how did you find out you were getting traded? Is it true that it was a DM sent by Russ? No, nah, me and Russ just talked. We was cool, you know what I mean? Then we had a conversation after that, and then I talked to the front office people. That so, because I I'm always fascinated by how how you guys find out like oh you are moving now and you're going to another place like if you would have stayed in D.C. do you think about what could have been what would have been? For sure, like I never wanted to leave, you know what I mean. But things happen. But uh, I got like when I knew I was getting traded, uh, Tommy Shepard had gave me a text message and said please call that night uh, when I was watching games and then we talked on the phone and he told me what happened and you move forward from there. John, your, your, your guy Brad was traded to the Suns over the, uh, over the summer. Um, he hasn't made his debut yet, but what, what do you think he brings to the Suns? Uh, how, how good do you think he can be for that group? Uh, shoot, we got three guys that can get 30 or 40 any given night, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I think just with them, it's about uh, just getting on the court. Uh, you know, most important throughout the whole league is staying healthy. We all know that. And uh, just seeing how they gel together, you know what I mean? Like we've seen a little snippet of like one or two games, I think, in preseason. But uh, that's why you have a long NBA season to try to get where you can find out where you're going to fit in, in the, on the West. But uh, you don't want to miss too many games and get out of the wrong position and spot because the West is a uh, deep conference this year. <laughs> Would you be interested in a reunion with Brad? Obviously, that's a team in Phoenix that only has one you know, standard point guard on the roster. They're playing with Brad at different points once he's back as a starting point guard. But would you be interested in a reunion? For sure, yeah, like for sure. That's what I was hoping for in D.C. It went different ways, but uh, me and Brad are still brothers. Uh, we still talk a lot. You know, a lot of people always want to make us like we're not cool with each other. That's the reason why things happen. But uh, we still have conversations. We still talk a lot, and I congratulate him on uh, moving there and hope the best for him, and hopefully he can finally win him a championship. But, uh, yeah, I would definitely, if I could join their team, for sure, I would love that. Honestly, that Phoenix situation to me makes the most sense. I think you'd be perfect. They literally have one true point guard on that team, and the way you play, I think it'd be a perfect fit. But moving on to DeMarcus Cousins, we had him on the show. We know he's <laughs> one of a kind. You play with him at Kentucky. I think you live with him. How was that experience? What was that like? Any funny stories? And, and how was it like living with Boogie? Oh, man, a lot of funny stories. I met Boogie at 13 at Nationals. We met at Nationals, and we became cool since then. And every time with the camps and stuff, we said we were going to play in college together. He was my roommate, so, you know, he liked slow jams. And at night, he got to listen to slow, he got to listen to slow jams to go to sleep. I like to watch sports, and I'm like, bro, I'm not listening to slow jams with a seven-foot guy. Breaking news, next Boogie me. Cousins <laughs> likes to wind <laughs> down to some slow <laughs> jams visual. before he goes yes. to r &B. It's a wonderful yes. visual. He's an R&B guy. He's a big couch. teddy bear. He, 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 on the court, he tried to, like, act like he's not, but he's a big teddy bear off the court, man. He loves slow jams. Like, blast stop playing your slow jams, Marcin. I, I, I kind of love the visual of that. Okay, so you're from Raleigh, and then you chose Kentucky. And you had told the story about going to North Carolina and then Tyler Hansborough, and it was a whole thing where he just you know, basically ignored you. He now, earlier this week, has said, doesn't remember anything like that happening, doesn't remember you coming to campus. What, what is the story here? What went down? It was an unofficial visit, so it wasn't official. So, you know, back then it wasn't social media and all that. And I didn't take an official visit. You know, I'm right up the street 30 minutes away. So I went up there, watched him practice, and went to a football game and stuff like that. But, you know, let him say what he got to say. And you got to know, you got to know Psycho T. You, you got to know him. He's, he, he lives his own, his own style. Let me, let me ask you this, John. Former Kentucky player, Shea Gilgis Alexander, he's getting a lot of love. A lot of MVP talk right now. Can Shea go down as one of the best players to come out of Kentucky, if not the best? What's Ooh. your opinion? For sure, a thousand percent. Like uh, I knew Shea was good, uh, but I feel like Shea's got a lot better, and he's more quicker than I thought. You know what I mean? Like in college, he didn't look like that explosive and that quickness, but he's definitely got better. And like if you're not double teaming him, uh, you're in for a long night. I can tell you that. And I feel like they got a great young core around them. All the pieces they're adding. And I kind of heard y'all saying, like, I feel like they can move check to the four and give him a five-man, kind of like uh, the Spurs are doing with Wimby. I think they'll definitely be a dangerous team because I like Giddy, I like Dort, I like Jaden Williams. I like their team a lot. And uh, he's much CTV. You know I mean, you got to watch him, bro. He's very gifted, talent. And he's shooting 50% getting, like, 30 a game, and it's not all layups. It's mid-range, step-backs, threes, whatever you need. I got him as my MVP pick this year. Mm. I'm, hey, you're not wrong. You can't be a sleeper. That's not a sleeper no more. You know what I mean? Like last year, you felt like, you know, like you don't watch film on a guy too much. They know about Shea. They know that team is coming. And if they can be like a top five, top four team in the West, he can, he can, he can, he can mess around and win it. 
I'm going to go rogue here, John. Oh, dear. No, uh, I want to go, I wanna go rogue here. I want to, this isn't the question I'm supposed to ask. I want to know, in your opinion, who are the best five Kentucky Wildcats? Oh. What's your starting lineup? Oh, yeah. I want to spot. Man, that's a good one. You know position, why? position by position. Yeah, because I, I, I feel like the NBA, all NBA should go by position by position like they used to. I mean, not even, I think she's just best players. I should, no, I feel like they should go best player like they used to. Uh, for me, I'm going me at the point. I'm going so SGA Jamal isn't, in my... isn't going to be the best Kentucky. <laughs> okay. <laughs> SGA's out already? He's out. No, no, no. Pick listen, one, listen, listen. I'm playing, putting him at the no, two? I'm playing, no, no, no. But SGA at my two. All right. Okay. D. Book at my three. It's mm. a good game. AD at my four. And Boogie at my five. Boogie at that's five. A nasty yeah, five. That's pretty good. That's a nasty five. See, like, right to there. me, it's like, I'm going to tell you why it's tough to say, because now De'Aaron Fox at the level he's at now. Right. True. See, people forget about De'Aaron Fox. Like, he's at the level he's at now, so it's like, he could be a front runner for MVP. They can be one of those top teams in, like, you know, what he's been doing to teams, so... I mean, he's one of those guys I almost put on my list, but I can't take myself off. No, that's exactly. <laughs> Cannot take yourself off your own list. Okay, AD mentioned um, he gets a lot of hate. Like, it's, it's even though he's done quite well in the game so far this season, but he's one of those guys that it's a love-hate thing and there's nothing in between. Why do you think that is? Uh, I think AD's, you want to say gifted, bro. He has everything you need as a big man. To block shots, rebound, def defend, can shoot, dribble, pass. I just think, you know, at times, sometimes they say he goes missing. And that's what a lot of people credit him off of. Like, he have a good game, then he goes missing, then he have another good game, then he have a stretch, or then he might get injured. But, you know, injuries are part of the game, and sometimes the game plan changes. So he has to fit in where he can. I just feel like when he's more aggressive, the Lakers are a lot better when he's super aggressive. John, a uh, serious question. The John Wall dance, does that come out to play <laughs> ever? Man, I don't know. I ain't did that in so long, but uh, <laughs> it'd be funny to see people do it, man. That was so long ago. I was a kid, like no social media, just having fun, happy to be in college and be on the biggest stage. That, you know what I mean? Kids from Lou know what I'm talking about. Not, not think you have an opportunity to be on that level. Uh, I remember watching Lou when he was on uh, MTV Cribs back in the day, when he was at South <laughs> Gwinnett. So I know how special he was, and we built a bond of being brothers. So, no, I never thought it would get to that level. <laughs> it was just something you being a kid and having fun. But I think when I dug you my first game, it was against Lou. Then we it's, played it's Philly. Part of, it's part of you, brother. Game you, are, you are synonymous think, with the Dougie. Yeah. <laughs> that is your, that's it was your a party, dance. Because Bronny, Bronny just did it the other yeah. day um, for their Midnight Madness. And it was like, who won the competition? I was like, Bronny didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, John, thank you so much. I know you can get back to your workout. We, we appreciate the time very much. Good luck, bro. Thank yeah, you so much. You appreciate it, bro. My boy. Yes, indeed.